I'm right on the border of two of the most beautiful countries in Europe. On my left is a country that has been a popular tourist destination since the Cold War. And on my right is a country that is just being discovered. Welcome to Poland and Slovakia! The countries of Poland and Slovakia lie right in the heart of Central Europe. I'll start my journey in Poland, in the rural villages of Silesia. Then I'll head to the holy city of Częstochowa before heading west to visit Wrocław and the Sudety Mountains. I'll then return east to visit Kraków and Wojcowski National Park before continuing south to the Pianina Mountains. I'll then head to Zakopane where I'll set off on a three-day trek through the Tatra Mountains. I'll then cross the border into Slovakia to visit Demonovska Cave before ending my journey with a hike to Prochetska Dolina. I arrived in the tiny village of Janu, about 20 miles east of Częstochowa, population 964 and this is where I'm going to be staying with my family for the next two months. And there's not much to see in Janu, so I'm heading just a few blocks south to the neighboring village of Zwote Potok. We're in the village of Zwote Potok, and over there is the Raczynski Palace. The Raczynskis were a family of counts, and they were a one of the wealthiest families in Poland and they have palaces all over the country and this is one of them and this one was built in the 1850s. This is the house of Zygmunt Krasinski. He was a famous Polish poet and also a wealthy count and he came here with his family on vacation in 18. 57 and then left a few months later when their daughter died. This is the church of Jan Sicio, which is the Polish name of John the Baptist. It was built in the year 1258 and it's one of the oldest churches in Poland. Right here is the entrance to the church's catacombs where Zygmunt Krasinski's beloved daughter Elżbietka is buried. She was only four years old when she died and her father was so devastated that he left the country and never returned because he just couldn't bear to live in the place of his daughter's death. And Krasinski then died himself two years later. We're on our way to this nearby nature reserve and we're going to go visit some caves and rocks. This region is highly composed of limestone and where there is limestone there are usually caves. In fact, southern Poland has one of the highest concentration of caves in Europe. This, this area alone has around a dozen caves and this is one of them. It's called Grota Niedźwiedzia, which literally translates to Bear's Grotto, which makes me a little nervous. I hope there isn't a bear in there. Now, this cave actually gets its name because there was actually a skeleton of a prehistoric bear that was discovered here. Today there are no bears living here.
but you can find frogs. There are around a dozen of these small caves located in just this small area of Poland. Most of which haven't even been fully explored. And new ones are still being discovered. This enormous limestone arch formation behind me is called Brama Twardowskiego, which means Twardowski's Gate. There's a legend that says Twardowski was actually a man who was tortured here by the devil. Now, this puddle of water here might not look like much, but this is actually called the Spring of Events, and the locals believe that it only appears when there are world conflicts going on, and it last appeared seven years ago when the war in Iraq erupted and now it just appeared recently with all the conflicts in the Middle East. Today this area is a nature reserve and it's home to hedgehogs, deer, foxes, snakes, and other animals, but during World War II, these forests were home to the Polish partisans called Leszny, which literally translates to forest people, which is appropriate since they would live and hide in forests throughout Poland, and it consisted of everyone from soldiers to regular civilians and oftentimes Boy Scouts and what they did they were the Polish resistance and they would stay behind in these forests and continue to protect Poland against the Germans even after the fighting had stopped and to some people they were considered terrorists but to others they were heroes. This guy right here is a grass snake. <laughs> it's basically the same family of snakes as the garter snakes you find in America and it's called a grass snake because they love to live and hide in tall grass like this near the water but despite their name they're just as comfortable in the water as they are on the land. Well look at the beautiful yellow pattern on its head. Wow, beautiful snake. And go back and there he goes right into the water. Eagle's Nest Trail and there's a lot of castles located on this trail. This is one of them, Mirovsky Castle, and it was built in the 14th century. This is just one of the many castles in the area that was built by King Kazimierz the Great. For making the 
Eagle's Nest Trail. It's about a hundred miles long. It runs from Częstochowa all the way to Kraków. There are a lot of neat castles on it. We just saw Mirov Castle and now we're, we're heading to Bobolice Castle. Just get down the zone because you say you're on the This is Bobolica Castle. The other one was Miro. They're actually named after two brothers, Miroslav and Bobo. This one was also built in the 13th, in the 1300s. And they actually did some restoration on it because this is what it used to look like before they did all this. We're near the tiny village of Morsko. Here's another medieval castle. This one was completed in the 16th century, so it's not as old as some of the other castles we saw. This is the Skarzice church, and it was built in 1583 on the remains of an old defense tower under the invocation of the Holy Trinity. Up there is a giant limestone arch formation called Okienik Vilki and limestone arches are actually rare. Most arch formations in the world <coughs> are made are created from sandstone but there are a few limestone arches in the world a lot of them located here in poland and this is one of the largest in the country this is the podzamchu castle the castle was built in the 16th century by Jan Bonner on the site of an old Gothic castle. The Swedish invasions between 1655 and 1702 caused the castle to collapse. And by 1872 the castle was abandoned by all inhabitants. The castle was later rebuilt by Severin Boner in a Renaissance style. Behind me is Zamek Olsten. It's one of the many castles located on the Eagle's Nest Trail and it was built in the year 1356 on the site of an old wooden fortification that was burned in a fire in the 12th century and it's one of the many castles that was built by King Kazimierz the Great. This is the remainder of the old fortification that surrounded the castle. It was severely damaged in 1587 by the armies of Maximilian Habsburg and today this is all that's left of it. So, the castle was raided and destroyed in 1655 and today this is all that's left in it. Oh, uh, no? Hey, that plan right there is Przytulia Krakowska and it's an endemic species because it's found only here in this one spot. Nowhere else in the world. 
There's a legend that says the ghost of a tortured prisoner haunts this place.